But yeah, I was always a data nerd. And so I was an economics major. And then I got a job in real estate out of college. And I worked for a real estate company in Boston called UC Funds, which is a, a bridge lending company. And we would make loans on you know, commercial real estate properties like apartment buildings and hotels and office buildings. Some of them would already be built, others would be under construction, and I was an underwriter there helping to figure out like, do we wanna do this deal? Is this market a good market? Is this city a good city? Is this borrower that we're giving money to gonna hmm. pay us back? That's how I kind of started melding my like nerd mentality with real estate. And that was a great job for a long time, but eventually I became obsessed, not with just like doing real estate deals, but understanding fundamentally, like if I looked at a deal in Dallas uh, for an apartment building, or I looked at a deal in Corpus Christi, which you know were markets we did in, why was Dallas a better market than Corpus Christi? Like people would say, oh, because Dallas has better job growth and whatever. But I wanted to answer like the question, why? With with data, with with facts backed by data, not with opinions. Exactly, because you know, there's all these platitudes about you know uh, the economy and migration in the housing market, and a lot of them are accurate and true. But rarely do people try to stop and ask the question like why and validate whether it's accurate. So I left that company and I started Reventure Consulting, which is a real estate data consulting company. And I originally started Reventure as a way to sell data in market reports to real estate investors so they could figure out in 2020 and 2021 the best cities to buy real estate in based on the underlying fundamentals, which are things like job growth, wage growth, home building relative to migration, uh, and trying to understand all these things. Uh, and then sometime around late 2020, early 2021, I started saying, hey, let me put some of these videos on YouTube of this data. And that's when the YouTube thing just completely blew up. And that has to be, uh, your delivery is excellent. It really is. Appreciate I mean, that. you just, you're just, just flawless. Um, but the, the main reason why that blew up has to be because you're providing, you're distilling all this grain down into a perfect shot glass of, you know, 50 exactly. proof. Exactly. So, so right. It gives, it, it's amazing. The U S housing market is, a uh, $30 trillion asset market, yet it's so poorly understood, which is amazing. It's the biggest asset market in America, even bigger than the stock market. Yet, like the stock market is something people really seem to understand well. They look at the company financials, they look at the revenue and the future growth, and like they value it. And outside of some bubbles that occur, like it seems like there's more technical understanding of the stock market. The housing market seems to be kind of in the stone ages, like to draw an analogy, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Moneyball or read the book, Billy Bean and the Oakland Athletics. hundred like, percent. They introduced- Brad the, Pitt, bro. Brad Pitt, great movie, right? Absolutely. They Jonah Hill. Yeah. Jonah Hill, mm -hmm. and one of his first kind of like more serious, kind of, serious yeah. roles. Great movie. Super bad. But that talked about how in baseball, they transitioned in the late 90s, early 2000s from just using kind of like high level platitude, you know, oh, this player is good or bad to like, well, what does the data say? And instincts. And right. And because a lot of got a lot of the old school guys are like, well, I, I mean, we get we I got a feel for this. He doesn't hustle. Exactly. Like, or, no, no. Let's look at the data right. and decide. Right. And that goes against a lot of the old school that a lot of the old school guys still rail against that stuff. That's actually. Right. And so it actually is. A, it's, it's a great analogy. Uh, what happened in baseball to what's happening in the housing market. Because the issue was that old school baseball scouts, they would actually look at Billy Bean, who was a player back in the day drafted by the Mets. And he was what they called the jeans model player. Six foot three, built, five tool player, could throw, could run, could hit. But he actually wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah. Like when you look at the production and all of that. And uh, what the data- He looked the part. He looked the part. But he wasn't the part. In the way that maybe the Austin, Texas housing market looks the part oh. of a uh, housing market that's going to boom forever. A little foreshadowing. Right, yeah. right. Or the US housing market looks the part of a oh God. market that's going to boom forever. But then, you know, what they realize is, oh, no, he's actually not that good. And the data actually says that there's a player like Scott Hatterberg or Chad Bradford, who they're kind of like frumpy- you know, Chad Radford's like a signed winder pitcher. Scott Hatterberg's a little overweight. Like the traditional scout would never think, oh, that's the best player. But the stats said, well, he takes a lot of walks. He adds a lot of value. He gets on base. He scores runs. 
And so that was a shift that happened in baseball in the early 2000s. And now every baseball team, for the most part, uses data. The housing market's in a similar stage in America right now in the early 2000s, uh, as the baseball was in the early 2000s, where we're just now starting to see data on the U.S. housing market in a more kind of like fundamental, educated way of looking at it, which is what I'm trying to provide at ReVenture Consulting. So to bring Austin into the picture. So this was a boomtown housing market, not just during the pandemic, but before the pandemic. And the narrative on Austin goes, there are so many people moving to Austin. Therefore, it's just going to boom forever. That's just kind of like where the argument starts and stops for many real estate investors and realtors. The question I want to ask was, well, how many people actually are moving to Austin? Let's look at that over 30 years of job growth and migration, and then compare that to 30 years of data on how many homes and apartments were built, and then look at the surplus and deficit year by year, and then correlate that to how home prices have grown in Austin over the last 30 years. And only then can we start to make some educated determinations about, well, actually are so many people moving to Austin right now more than they were in the past, or is it roughly the same amount of people? Was there kind of a short-term bump during the pandemic and the home builders are now building way more homes and prices are at a point now where people are starting to leave Austin. And that's how you get the characterization that I have of Austin as the biggest housing bubble in America right now that I think is going to go down 35 to 40 percent. And it's followed. Uh, it's number one. And it's fall. What was no what's number two? Boise, Idaho would be number two. And number three is Salt Lake. Salt Lake City. And number four is Seattle. Seattle and Phoenix, I would throw in there as well. Basically, the biggest housing bubbles in America right now are a lot of the places that for the last 10 years, people were like, you need to buy in. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a couple of things going on. The first thing is when the home prices get so high above what the local wages are, it tends to really like destabilize the market and is a sign of a bubble. Because, I mean, to be able to afford a house, you need to make the money to afford the house. Right. I mean, technically speaking, right, to get a loan. Yeah, how do you get the loan without being able to prove your funds, right? Exactly. So yeah. if you push the prices and then the mortgage rates up, which is happening now at the same time, it creates a situation where in one year, the typical cost of a mortgage payment has gone up 65% in America, while the wages have gone up 6%. 6 Run that back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. So let's go back a little further to the middle of the uh, beginning of the pandemic, mid-2020. Right. So the, that's when the rates really plummeted, the mortgage rates, right? And home prices were still cheap back then. And so the typical cost of a monthly mortgage payment in America for a new home buyer was around $1,100 a month in August 2020. $1,100 a month on average. So that includes like Seattle, but also includes like uh, Iowa. Today, that payment is $2,100 a month. Oh so God. in the span of 18 to 20 months, it's doubled due to the prices going up, which will just increase the payment, and then the mortgage rates now surging. So it's like a double whammy for the home buyer in terms of affordability. And in the same span, wages have only gone up around 10 to 